Welcome in, everyone, to another edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, as always, Tommy Brzee. It is officially July 1st. It's going to be a crazy month in the sport of college football. I can just feel it. But we're going to start today with a little bit of an easier show. We're going to start talking a little bit about Colorado. We're going to get into how some of the expectations they're putting on themselves is kind of setting up the Dion and company era of Colorado for failure and we'll kind of break that down and see how they can kind of adjust their expectations and make it a very very successful program moving forward then we'll get into Quinn Ewer's comments he made some comments about the SEC upcoming schedule that did not make a lot of people in the SEC realm of things very happy so I want to break that down for you all then we'll get into Heisman odds I'll give you some underdogs that I like some guys that I don't necessarily love too much and then some dark horses as I see it we'll get into some uh, recruiting updates Oregon and one on the absolute tear this weekend that we have to get into. And then we have Monday questions, and we're going to do a little bit of an SEC edition, break down some of the different things you guys got to know for the SEC this upcoming year. But before we jump in, I do want to remind you all we get tons of questions and comments throughout the show. And the best way for you all to get your question on the screen, we can have a fun back and forth here, is to use the tip and donation link at the bottom of the screen, gsmcpodcast.net. It's a huge help not only to us here at the network, but to you all. You get to kind of have a fun, interactive experience experience here and that's always good for the both of us so if you would like to use that definitely do again that's gsmcpodcast.net but let's jump in let's talk about Colorado and let's talk about how frankly they'll be okay um, this is going to be a good program if they give themselves time I think one of the big things that we talk about with Colorado when we're talking about Colorado a lot frankly because they are the topic of conversation in college football and frankly they will be in as long as Dion is in black and gold Colorado will be at the forefront of the conversation in college football. Now, how they're going to be at the forefront changes every single year, right? Everything's very, very fluctuating there, and it will be for pretty much as long as he's there. Um, That's just the reality. Uh, And the question is, how long can they kind of sustain this type of approach and the way that they're talking? I think it's probably the biggest part of this is... Dion came into the season with a lot of hype, right? They're coming into the season with a lot of energy, a lot of juice, and they're trying to deliver on that. But Dion has promised a playoff berth. They have promised a Big 12 championship. Both of those things are going to be really tough for this team to do, just plain and simple, I'll be totally honest. With the current roster that they have compared to the other ones around the Big 12, it's going to be remarkably hard for them to pull this off. Not to say that they can't, but just to say... The expectations are relatively high if you're putting them up there, but the reality is if you set those expectations very high, people are going to, you know, react accordingly, right? If you go 7 and 5 this year, which frankly would be a really good year for this Colorado team where 2 years ago you're 1 and 11, you've overturned the roster just insane amounts over the first 2 years, going uh 5 and 7 going 8 and 4 or 7 and 5 excuse me or going 8 and 4 would be a huge win period end of story but we wouldn't treat it like that and i'm not necessarily saying that we should treat it like a huge success because frankly the guy up top told us not to um he said that they if they don't make a playoff that they don't win a big 12 title it is not a good season so we should necessarily uh we should probably react accordingly right we should probably you know say the th- certain things that he kind of put on himself in some ways you know he has kind of created this aura around uh, boulder and a lot of it is really good for that program a lot of it is going to create this world where they can do things that they couldn't do three or four years ago and frankly they're doing a lot of them incredibly incredibly well i mean one of the big things that colorado has fallen short on for quite some time but especially over the last you know decade or so is talent acquisition it's been incredibly tough for them to get the number of players that they need to compete at a high level and that's something that they've been kind of fighting with for quite some time and then Dion rolled in the town and that pretty much was fixed overnight obviously they have a ton of things to figure out in terms of the roster but in terms of just getting these guys on campus it's pretty effortless for this guy. He doesn't really go on home visits. He doesn't really do some of the things that some of the other coaches do and still brings in guys like Jordan Seaton. Obviously, Travis Hunter came with him from Jackson State, so that's a little bit different, but LeJounte Wester, BJ Green, all of these guys are really talented and a couple of years ago would not have looked twice at Colorado. That's just the reality. Dion brings a certain energy to that school and a certain 
juice to that school that kids want to play for him. That's never going to change, and that will always be the case for as long as Dion's there, frankly. Um, and one of the other things is obviously leaning too much on the portal. That's the other big worry, and frankly, it's a worry for me as well. I don't necessarily love the way they're going about business, and I think the right way is through high school recruiting and then patching holes in the portal. All that being said, I think there's kind of an interesting approach that's kind of being formed around Colorado, which is we are going to lean on the portal. That's going to be the aggressive way that we go about business over here. But we also are going to go after high school for a couple of positions. And the ones that I've noticed most readily, at least, that they're going after is O-line and quarterback. And frankly, if I was going to pick two positions that I want to fill out from the high school uh, ranks, it'd be those two. And obviously, you know, if you need to patch holes with some higher level offensive linemen later on in their careers, that's totally fine. But if you want to build a sustainable product with your offensive line year over year, you're probably going to want to recruit from high school and make sure that you have guys kind of rolling in and out. That's why Jordan Seaton's likely going to start there for three years starting this year. And there's going to be guys that roll in over the next couple of years that will probably start for at least a couple of years before moving on to the NFL. So, those two positions, having them kind of nailed down is huge for this program because say they flip Julian Lewis, say they kind of uh, add him to the class and this offensive line gets a little bit better and a little more talented and they're doing a great job of that on the recruiting trail right now. If all of that kind of comes into play, this could be a team that maybe isn't you know incredible next year, but is building towards something maybe in 26 or in 27 that can be a really good product. Um, and that's kind of the big thing here where everyone wants to hold Colorado to this standard, which is frankly the standard that Dion is putting on them. And I fully understand being confident in your team. I also understand not putting the expectations too high. Um, so it's going to be kind of a battle back and forth, frankly, with myself to kind of not hold them to those standards and not hold them to those expectations. But I'm trying to take a step back and I'm trying to remove the Colorado from it all and remove the Dion and remove those comments about, you know, we're going to win the Big 12. We're going to go to the playoff. You know, Shadur is going to be the number one quarterback taken and him and Travis Hunter are going to go top five in next year's draft. I'm trying to take all of that away and just look at this from a pure football perspective. This is a program that's getting better pretty much across the board. Whether you want to talk about talent acquisition, whether you want to talk about the coaching staff, whether you want to talk about NIL and all of those things, infrastructure, all of that stuff is better than it was when Dion walked in. Now it's a little bit different. There's no two ways about that. Not everyone loves the approach. I don't necessarily love it too much either, but it doesn't change that the approach is, at least in short term, working. Um, it, they're getting better team. You know, they started with a one and eleven team that had a talent level that was nowhere near getting ready to compete. They went four and eight last year, and it wasn't necessarily the year that they wanted. And they kind of got torn apart for it. But let's be totally honest: a three win improvement is huge. And if they did it again this year and went to seven and five, it would be huge again. But it wouldn't be dealt with that uh, that way. And frankly, it's Dion's doing. And it's not necessarily to say that he shouldn't be confident in his guys. It's not to say that he shouldn't make some of the comments that he's making. It's just to say, give your program a shot. Um, don't let everyone else kind of bog down your program and make it seem like it's doing worse than it is, because then the recruits are going to listen to that. And then transfer portal guys are going to listen to that. And then you have to deal with that as a head coach. So I think that's the biggest thing here where you look at the reality around Colorado, it's the reality at like 95% of the places around the country. Uh, whether you want to talk about Dion possibly leaving in the future, or what if the talent dries up, or what if they don't perform over the next couple of years, all of those are problems at every single university except for a couple when you talk about moving on, because some are destination jobs, Colorado's not one of those, and it likely will never be, unless you know Dion just wants to hang out for the next 20 years. But the reality is, the problems that we kind of look at Colorado and poke holes in what they're doing, a lot of them are pretty hypothetical, whether it's Dion possibly leaving or them possibly not improving the way that they say they're going to prove. All of that stuff hasn't happened yet or is just something that happens all across the country and every single program has to worry about it. So I don't necessarily think we should hold it against Colorado that they are doing the same thing. And it's not necessarily to say that we shouldn't, you know, take Dion for his word. We shouldn't you necessarily expect this team to win a Big 12 title and go to the playoff and all of that type of stuff. It's just to say we should talk a little bit 
we should talk with a little bit of nuance when we talk about this team. Let's just be totally honest. When they come into a 1-11 team, take it to 4-8, and eight, the talent level is so much better the second year. You go, or excuse me, year one, and then you go into year two, the talent level is even better, especially across the lines of scrimmage, and you have even bigger aspirations for this upcoming year. Everything's moving in the right direction down there. You would think that this season is do or die for them, the way that everyone's talking about it, the way that Dion's talking about this season. You would think that this is the most important season in Col- in Colorado history. It's another building block. It's it's part of a process that they are building out over there. And frankly, I think they're going to be successful if they give themselves time to figure out what that model is. Because um, frankly, I don't think they're at their end result when it comes to r- how they build their roster and talent acquisition. I think they're going to go more towards the high school route in the next couple of years, if I'm being totally honest. I also think there's not necessarily going to be this, you know, I suppose, aggressive energy f- to see Dion fail in the future because there's going to be more results behind him to say he can, you know, do this, this, and this, and he has done this, this, and this, and we have to, you know, react accordingly. So it's one of those things that I'm kind of stuck in between a rock and a hard place. I I very much want to believe in what Dion's doing and love the approach, and, and I think a lot of the things are getting better over there. Frankly, almost across the board, they're getting better. But it doesn't change that expectations have been put on this team by the head guy that are a little unrealistic for this year. Let's just be totally honest. This team is not a playoff caliber team. If you look at that roster, you can kind of talk yourself into it, but it's really tough to do it. Um, Because if you look beyond the starting 22, it's not necessarily the greatest team. And that's just the reality of what they're dealing with right now. It doesn't mean they can't be successful. And it doesn't mean Dion's not doing a lot of really good things down there. It's just to say there are a lot of coaches in this industry that have had really good success, but it hasn't been looked that way because they're at a certain program or because they talk a certain way to the media, and then they their time is not remembered the way that it should be. So I fully understand that Colorado is moving in the right direction. I fully understand that there's going to be a lot of eyes on them going uh, in the next you know couple of years, and I also fully understand that a lot of these worries that I have about this team were put there by their head coach, Deion Sanders, but it doesn't change the reality, which is this Colorado team is getting better. And if they give themselves time to figure out what they want to do in the future and not necessarily add all of these expectations that are unrealistic to themselves, they're going to be a successful program. It's just going to take time. And frankly, right now, I don't think they're giving themselves enough time. So it's one of those things that I'm going to have to battle with this year. It's one of those things that a lot of us are going to have to battle with where you want to treat Colorado the way that Dion, you know, claims that they should be treated as a playoff contender, but if you look at the roster, they're just frankly not. So it'll be fascinating to kind of watch that develop and see how people react to Colorado if they do make the playoff hypothetically or if they do go 7 and 5 and 8 and 4, what is the conversation because it would be a win of a season, but I don't think it would be treated that way. But we're going to take our first break here and when we come back we're going to talk about Quinn Ewers and we're going to talk about the comments he made at the Manning uh, Passing Academy and how some SEC fans are none too happy. So we'll break that down right after this, so stick with us. <laughs> 